Church. It's Tuesday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 13 as we begin a brand new study. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 17 over the next uh, several weeks as we look at what is called the kingdom parables. Parables that the king gave concerning the kingdom that he was going to establish on the earth and the kingdom that is already in establishment in our hearts as we uh, serve him each and every day. And he gives some characteristics of the kingdom and we're going to be looking at those. Uh, some have labeled this the seven sacred secrets of God's kingdom. And so these are some mysteries that God gives to us so that we might know that everything that is happening is something that God has not only prophesied is going to happen, but he's given us information about how to withstand some of the things that are going on in our day and time. Now, in chapter 13, as we look at the parables Jesus is going to give, it begins in verse 1 by saying, On the same day, Jesus went out of the house. He sat down by the sea. A great multitude were gathered together to him so that he got into the boat, sat down. The whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And he sowed some seed, and it fell on the wayside, and birds came to devour it. Then he gives this parable about sowing, and we'll look at that later on. But then it says in verse number 9, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples came to him and said, Why are you teaching in parables? Why, why, why are you covering or veiling what you mean and doing it in parables? Jesus tells us why in verse 11. And he answered and said, this because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So here he calls them mysteries. But to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And who, who has an abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing, they do not see. Hearing, they do not hear nor do they understand. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn so that I would heal them. But blessed are you, for your eyes they see, and your ears they hear. For surely I say to you that the prophets, that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see. Now Jesus is going to give these kingdom mysteries. He calls them mysteries, the, the sacred secrets of the kingdom of God. And he's going to tell us these things that are going to happen ahead of time so that we do not grow discouraged. In fact, the reason why these seven secrets have been given to us is because many people teach that the kingdom of God is established in the church and the church is going to get better and the church is going to take over the world. Uh, the Catholic Church believed that was going to be and still believes that's going to happen and that they're going to establish the kingdom of God on the earth and only after the kingdom of God is established, which they tried to do during the Middle Ages, on this earth, and Christianity rules and reigns, then will Messiah come back. But as you look at these secrets, that's not the case. The world's not going to get better. The world's going to get worse. And the church is going to seemingly become very corrupt. The church is going to become very heretical. The church is going to become very lukewarm and have very little impact on the world. It's not going to get better and better, bigger and bigger. Uh, it's going to get to a point where, as Jesus said, will the Son of Man even find faith on the earth when he comes again? So when we look around and we see these things start to happen, we, we see there's wickedness all around us. There's wickedness in the world. There is worldliness in the pew. There's weakness in the pulpit. And we see that the kingdom of God seems to be losing ground and losing influence. We would say... Has the gospel failed? Is God's words wrong? God teaches us we go forth. We're going to be victorious. Well, what does that mean? 
No, the kingdom, the kingdom parables are here to teach us this is what's going to happen throughout the ages until Messiah comes again and establishes his kingdom on the earth. And so it gives us some secrets there. Now, there are several reasons uh, that we need to look at these. Number one, we need to look at the method of his teaching, which is parables. And the reason he does this in parables, he's going to tell us in just a moment. But he gives parables, and the word for par parable is connected to the word parallel. It is to set alongside, to compare. You set something up and you compare it to this thing. So he, said, he will say something like, the kingdom of God is like an unto. It it's, gives an illustration of what it's like. It's uh, been even called a, a heavenly, a, or excuse me, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning is what a parable is. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And so it's given as a, first of all, mystery. Uh, things that most people don't get, they don't understand. It was written for the children of God, and unless you have been born again and have the Spirit of God, many of the teachings of these parables or of all of Scripture makes no sense to you. So it was purposely hidden from the eyes of those who do not see, the ears of those who will not hear, because it was written to God's children. So it's, it's a mystery that is being revealed and the motive for that, he says, is because uh, I'm going to reveal it to those who will receive it. To those who receive it, I'm going to give more. That faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. That those who come to faith in Jesus Christ, God will give the truth to. In fact, you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. The truth is Jesus. Those who have a relationship with Jesus, they're going to listen to these kingdom parables and they're going to say, oh, okay, after explaining it, after explaining to them, I get it. I see what's going on very clearly. I understand these things, and here's how I'm direct. And so it's to reveal to those who have eyes to, hear, uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, but it's also to conceal. It conceals it from those who have no concept of what Scripture is really all about. They don't see what's happening. They don't understand what's going on. And, and they can't really grasp these truths. And so therefore, God uses this uh, to keep them from being able to, uh, to, to, I guess, confuse what's going on, even though they do that anyway in some part. Uh, the Bible tells us not to cast our pearls before the swine, that these people can't even understand these things. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. They can't grasp these things. They'll just turn and rend you. And so he's given it in parables so that the mystery is able to be given out publicly and, and not uh, people being, uh, being persecuted so much uh, for delivering the truth. Though that's going to happen in some part anyway. So as we go into these parables, I think you're going to find them fascinating. The seven parables talk about uh, as we go through human history over these last 2,000 years, you're going to see these things have been true all along, but you're going to see us moving to the end time very rapidly. Let us pray together. Father, as we study the seven sacred secrets, we pray that you will help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see with. In Jesus' name, amen.